Good morning, everybody. I'm Jason Wheeler, Community Information Specialist at Flagler Schools. Uh, we're going to have Mr. James Tager, Superintendent of Schools, speak, and then uh, Mr. Trevor Tucker, who is our Chairman of the School Board, and followed by Sheriff Rick Staley here in Flagler County. We'll take questions after those comments. Uh, so let me introduce you now with uh, Superintendent Tager. Good morning. First, I want to thank our school board chairman, Trevor Tucker, who's here with us today. Also, uh, board member Andy Dance is with us in the back. I'd like to appreciate him being here. And Sheriff Staley for his attendance and his um, constant support. We really appreciate the sheriff also in attendance, and I appreciate their support as well, is Chief Matt Downey from Flagler Beach, and also Chief Tom Foster from Bunnell Police Department. It's a pleasure to also welcome with us today Tyler Perry from Flagler Palm Coast High School and also Alyssa Santori from Flagler Palm Coast High School and Kelsey Sweeney from Matanzas High School. Both of the students, all three students, have been involved with planning student events honoring the 17 souls who were lost in Parkland. I also thank Katie Hansen head of the Flagler County Education Association, and Roxy DeLuca, who leads our Flagler Educational Support Professional Association for standing with us today. The events of February 14th has school and law enforcement officials taking a much closer look at campus security. We appreciate Governor Scott and the lawmakers in Tallahassee for their work in addressing the needs of our local school districts. I want to share briefly where we were before the attack on Stoneman Douglas. Following the Sandy Hook mass shooting, Flagler schools took major steps in updating our security protocols. We attempted to get local voters to approve a referendum to help boost campus security. Voters rejected the referendum, so Flagler schools made as many updates as fiscally available to protect our students. After Sandy Hook, we routinely practice emergency drills ranging from fire and tornado to active shooter scenarios throughout the school year. We retrofitted the majority of our campuses, as is the one that you walked on today, to single entry systems to include automatic locking doors. I can tell you that they checked my license when I walked in the door today. I'm not sure if I've gotten it back yet, but they took it. We have instructed our teachers and staff to lock all classroom doors during the school day. We have placed school psychologists on our campuses. Currently, we have eight school psychologists. We would like to have nine. We have nine schools, so we feel like we're ahead of the curve on that one, but we need more help with mental health services. What are we doing now? I've met with many, many people over the last couple of weeks with staff, students, parents, our school board members, community members, Sheriff Staley, and a variety of law enforcement personnel and agencies. We currently have six school resource deputies and we have nine schools. We will increase that to 13. We want one at each of our elementary and middle schools and two at our high schools. We need a supervisor who is a, and a floater. A floater would fill in if any of our sheriffs are having training, SWAT training or whatever, so we always have a sheriff at our schools at SRD. Both of our middle schools, which you're sitting in one right now, sit adjacent to two elementary schools, so in essence, we could have a second SRD at our middle schools uh, momentarily. We do need additional funding from Tallahassee to accomplish this, but both the sheriff, our school board, and all of us are looking to have 13. We feel like we have to make that happen for our students. We will allow our school resource deputies full access to their required resources, which Sheriff Staley can go into more detail with his remarks. We're looking to enhance and enforce single point entry systems on our campuses. We're taking a closer look at hardening our campuses to include improved fencing, door locks, window locks, and protective film. We will conduct a vulnerability study with Homeland Security. They will come into each of our nine campuses unannounced to show us where we have our vulnerabilities. We feel like that will be 
very helpful for us. We will mandate active shooter training uh, in conjunction with Sheriff Staley for all of our employees and students. High school students will receive the same active shooter training as our employees. They are young adults, and we want them to receive the same training. Middle and elementary students will receive age-appropriate active shooter training. I mentioned earlier we want to increase the number of our psychologists to have one at every school. We have eight. We need nine. Mental health professionals in the district, we want to increase those. We have two social workers. We need to increase that number. We will emphasize restorative practices in the district to reinforce supports for our students. That's a summer leadership training that is scheduled for all of our administrators and directors. We will implement the See Something, Say Something curriculum at our high schools and middle schools. This idea came from our students that are sitting in front of you that we can put it in part of our courses that we already have. Um, student success and we have a middle school period too where we can put those classes in our curriculum as well. I, I want to say that our student voices matter and looking at what happened at Douglas High School, if there's one thing that's happened different than I've ever seen before is the way the students are reacting. We have some very intelligent young people and I'm going to promise to listen to them. Two of the things they've did, done here that I want to talk about is we have a first Friday event which is on the beach side and our students wanted to march over there across the bridge and they wanted to honor the 17 victims. They did that themselves. I said, I will support you, but they made all the arrangements with the chief of police on the beach side. They talked to the person that had the microphone so they could speak. They were very respectful and I appreciate our students for handling themselves with dignity and respect. At Matanzas High School this week, in their gymnasium during lunch, didn't interrupt instruction, I've gotta love that, but they went in during lunch, there were 17 chairs in front and they had researched the 17 victims. The coach that died there, they had a coaching shirt from one of our athletic directors in that chair. There was a band member, the instrument was on that chair. Those are the kind of things that our students do that are very, very important. So I appreciate your voice students and, and keep up the great work. Our students, Teachers and staff deserve the safest and most secure environment, and we will provide that for them. We do need additional financial support from Tallahassee, but not at the cost of our normal funding, which has been steadily dropping for Flagler schools. At this time, we'll take questions in a little bit, but it's my pleasure to welcome our board chairman, Trevor Tucker, and followed by him will be our sheriff, Rick Staley. Thank you, sir. You're Thank you all for coming today. Um, first, I'd like to thank Superintendent Tager. Um, he went, met with the board on Tuesday and outlined what was going to happen and listened about the concerns for the board. Um, Mr. Tager and Sheriff Saley have the full support of the Flagler County School Board when it comes to safety for all students and staff in the district. The cooperation between Flagler County Schools and Sheriff Staley to ensure the safety and security for all of our students is a board priority. And I would like to thank the sheriff for his continued support and cooperation with the Flagler County School District. Please, parents feel secure in knowing that all of Flagler School staff are working to keep your students safe. Between teachers, administrators, support staff, parents, students, and the community, we can all work together to make Flagler County Schools a safe and secure learning environment for all. Um, for more details, I'm gonna turn this over to Sheriff Staley. Thank you for coming. So again, thank you uh, for coming and uh, helping us communicate to the community uh, what we are doing to protect uh, their children while they are in school. I wanna introduce three people that came with me from uh, my staff, or maybe a couple more. Uh, my Undersheriff Jack Bislin, Chief of Investigative Services, Steve Brandt, the Director of my Domestic Homeland Security Section, uh, Randy Stroud, and the Sergeant of uh, our School Resource Deputy Program, Chris Vergazzo, uh, in the back. Uh, first, let me say to uh, Superintendent, uh, first let me say to Superintendent Tager, uh, our staffs and myself have been talking and meeting about school safety 
uh, since before and certainly since the tragic shooting in Broward County. And we extend our deepest sympathy to the families and students impacted uh, by this heinous crime and attack on our education system. A few years ago, as the superintendent mentioned, the community voted against additional revenue to provide deputies in every school and improving physical security at our schools. Unfortunately, today, society has changed and we can no longer overlook this need as these tragedies can happen in any community. The superintendent and I are committed to working together to make our schools safe so that students can learn without being in fear of their safety. In addition, we want parents to not have to worry about their children's safety while in school. I think the state and the school system are developing a good plan, and I think we have a solid plan for Flagler County. I am committed to work with our partners and put a school resource deputy in every public school. We will also work with our charter and private schools to have a deputy on their campuses also. One of the benefits of this initiative is not only school and campus safety, but it allows us to implement drug resistance education in elementary schools, gang resistance education in our middle schools, and additional deputies in our high schools, which are like small cities during the day. This initiative, if funded, will also help law enforcement build bridges and better relationships with our children before they get in trouble. Is this a test? With that said, it is not just a law enforcement and school district solution. Parents must be involved. As sheriff, I am the chief law enforcement officer of the county, but parents should be the chief law enforcement officer of their home and with their children. It is time that parents be parents again and not just friends to their children. Know your children's friends where they're going, who they're hanging out with, know what they are doing, what they're texting, what they're saying on their phone or computer or social media. Get involved in your child's life before it's too late. Let me tell you about some immediate actions that we are taking. Deputies have been directed to increase patrols of our schools when not on calls or other assignments. Our volunteer uh, COPs have been directed to increase their presence at our schools during their patrols. All our deputies are armed and trained on AR-15s. Even the sheriff, even I carry an AR-15. Deputies assigned to schools will have quicker access to their AR-15s in case they need to respond. Our deputies have been trained in responding to an active shooter or killer uh, situation. In fact, just last night at FPC, in conjunction with the school district, our SWAT team uh, did active killer uh, training. Uh, we do annual refresher training with all our deputies. We train for the worst. We pray that we never need it. But I want you to know that your sheriff's office is prepared and ready to respond. I have personally met with all our deputies to reemphasize that it is our duty to protect and that we will immediately respond and engage to stop the threat. Let me make this clear. This means we will kill any active shooter or attacker anywhere in this county. Last year, I created a domestic homeland security section in the sheriff's office. This section is required to vet all threats and coordinate with our state and federal partners on all threats that we identify as credible. In addition, as the superintendent mentioned, the Sheriff's Office Domestic Homeland Security Section is working with the school district to conduct security assessments on every school in Flagler County. I have also directed there is zero tolerance on making threats. This means that if a student or anyone makes a threat to throw, project, place, or discharge any destructive device in violation of Florida Statute 790.162, or makes a false report concerning the planting of a bomb, an explosive, or a weapon of mass destruction, or concerning the use of firearms in a violent manner in violation of Florida Statute 
we will arrest you, period. These are felony charges. Don't screw up your life because you're upset or mad about something and make a stupid threatening comment like, I'm going to shoot up or blow up the school because we will arrest you. Just like you don't stand up in a plane and say, I'm going to blow the plane up. You don't make those comments about any facility or any action just because you're mad or upset. I've also directed uh, that a detective be assigned to every case involving a threat. Since February 15th, we have received and investigated uh, 21 threats at schools. Bunnell Police Department investigated a threat yesterday at Bunnell Elementary School. Uh, two arrests have been made and investigations are continuing on the other cases. I anticipate more arrests in the future. We have referred two of these cases to the FDLE Fusion Center in Jacksonville. This was based on my domestic homeland security section's analysis and threat assessment on these individuals that concluded that the persons involved pose a credible threat to our community. The school district has also been made aware of our concerns and we are working jointly uh, on these cases. I want to encourage students, teachers, and administrators in the community that if you see something, say something. You might just prevent an incident and save a life. You can call Crime Stoppers in Northeast Florida at 1-888-277-TIPS. That's 1-888-277-8477. You can call the Sheriff's Office at 313-4911 or send us an email at tips at flaglersheriff.com. You can remain anonymous, receive a reward possibly up to $5,000. Do not be afraid to call. We want your assistance, we want the tips. I'd rather have my deputies check out hundreds of false alarms than not get a call or a tip and you think later after an incident occurs, I should have called. Or had I only called, maybe it wouldn't have happened. Don't have that guilt. Call us, let us check it out. Finally, I want to talk about arming administrators or volunteers on campus, as it appears the legislature has passed a law that allows us. Now, the governor hasn't signed it yet. We don't know exactly uh, all the details, uh, but uh, from what I'm hearing, uh, there's something in this bill. First, let me say that citizens who want to lawfully arm themselves for personal protection have a right to do so and I fully support their constitutional right. Arming people to protect others is a different matter. Here are some points or questions to consider. A person must receive continuing training to stay proficient just like my deputies do. They should have psychological testing. Is a teacher or administrator willing to take a life when all they really want to do is educate our children and they may know the attacker personally. The theory of just shooting to wound a person is for TV and is not realistic. You must be willing to shoot to stop the, the threat. Those are all decisions that have to be taken into account. Responding deputies must be able to immediately identify the good person from the attacker or we could have a double tragedy. But most importantly, a person must make the decision they are willing to put themselves between the innocent and an attacker. I personally made that decision about 40 years ago when I was shot three times saving the life of another person. I know that I'd do it again without hesitation. I would run towards the threat as I would expect my deputies to do, but the question is, would you? That's not your job. Taking a life or running toward an incident is a very difficult choice to make and should never be taken lightly. My deputies have made that choice and they are best trained and equipped to protect our community, especially our students. With that said, in our county we have many retired law enforcement officers and veterans living in our community, residents that already have significant training. I would support making them special deputies for perimeter security to supplement and work under the direction of a full-time deputy sheriff that is assigned to the school. But that would only be done if the law allows it, the school district approves it and supports it, and only after conducting an extensive background, psychological, and additional firearms and legal training. 
So with that, thank you. Questions? Sure. Um, we we have made one arrest, uh, and that was this week. Uh, we are continuing the investigation of the 20 other uh, school threats that we had, and uh, we arrested one person last night, an adult, uh, that made a threat. Uh, not on a school, but made a threat to uh, come down and shoot up a business. Uh, so it's not just a student issue, it's an adult issue also. As far as the 22nd case of Bunnell PD, we assisted Bunnell Police Department, and I would ask Chief Foster, who was here somewhere, if, if he wants to say anything on that case. Uh, is it still under investigation? We, no, they haven't found her. Is that right? So, correct. There is another individual. I want to know her first name of. So, we're going to seek it out to uh, possibly recover a firearm because it wasn't uh, left at the scene of the search. So, we are still ongoing investigation with that as well. Okay. So, all law enforcement works together. Bunnell requested our assistance. We assisted yesterday. Flagler Beach, uh, when, when we have threats or a lockdown or those kind of things, it's an all hands on deck and we have mutual aid between the agencies. So. I remember maybe a couple weeks ago a threat where uh, I think it was MHNHS and Beach Mountain Beach Authority and it was turned out to be seen as South Carolina. How many of these threats like that they assume to be not are unsubstantiated? Well, that, that one in particular was proven not, not to originate. Uh, that was a, a social media uh, that, that uh, kind of went viral. There were many agencies that had to deal with this. It just happened that the initials used, uh, uh, people uh, made the assumption that it was Matanzas High School when it was not. An arrest was made in that case in South Carolina. Uh, that case clearly uh, was not uh, a credible threat to our community. And the other uh, 20 cases that, that the sheriff's office is working are still under investigation. They've not been closed. Okay. What do you, do you want us to take one of your arrests to uh, what's associated yesterday? And, and have you all discussed whether or not you all would implement it here in Tampa? Or the guardian program? Oh, the guard, your guardian program? My, my viewpoint, which I've shared with the, the sheriff and with our school board, is that I feel that the only folks that should be protecting our students are deputy sheriffs or fully trained police officers. And, you know, like I, I said in my closing comments, that, that I support uh, the statute that apparently has been passed, but I think there's a lot of work for implementation that needs to be done. And I think that it's really a joint decision uh, between the superintendent, the school board, and the sheriff's office on, on how that and even if it would be implemented. I think the best thing is a deputy on, in every school uh, with, a, with a floater so that if a deputy is sick or in training, uh, we make sure that there's no school that is not staffed uh, during the school day and if a sentinel type or marshal per or whatever they're calling it, because it's kind of changed as it went through the legislative session, if it was to be uh, approved and agreed on, I think it's a very limited focus and they need to be uh, fully trained and, and uh, basically supervised by a deputy sheriff that is on that campus. You, you mentioned having a deputy in every school. Now, could they would you want them to go after the attacker on their own if they had to? Because that's, a big, that's still a big responsibility on that deputy. Would they be responsible or would they wait for backup? I have told my de deputies uh, that it is our duty to protect and we will immediately respond. Uh, I've just been meeting with all my employees um, and have re-emphasized that. I would expect my resource deputies to immediately engage. Obviously, they want to call for backup and those kind of things. 
but to immediately engage that person and stop the threat. Uh, Pre-Columbine, the training was contain, wait for SWAT, and then respond. Columbine changed all of that. Sandy Hook changed it even more. Uh, you respond now. We have taken an oath to protect this community, and if that means laying down our life, which God hope it doesn't happen, uh, but that is our oath to do, and uh, so I expect my deputies to respond immediately. Now let me raise one issue, and it actually occurred at Bunnell. Um, our radios do not work inside most of the schools. The new radio system that the county is uh, implementing will resolve that, but that played out yesterday there was a Bunnell police officer already at Bunnell Elementary School when um, the, the threat came into our 911 center and the Bunnell officer could not be contacted because the radio system couldn't penetrate the walls. And so that is a problem that we're currently dealing with. It will be resolved in the new county-wide uh, radio system, but that's a year or two years away. One last question if we could. Well, let me clarify it for you, Pierre. If you're an active shooter and you're holding a gun and you don't put it down, we're going to kill you. If you don't have the gun and you've already left and we apprehend you then, then no, I'm not the executioner. We're going to arrest you and put your ass in jail. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. I have a question if I can, Mandy Lee. It's my understanding that our school resource deputies have about 40 hours of training when it comes to handling people that have mental health issues. What does that training include, and will that training I, I, I can't give you specifics on the training. I, I do know there's very good training. We bring in outside people to do the training. Uh, whether it increase, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. And Mr. Pager, if you don't mind, I was a school psychologist. Is there a system in place to identify students who have been bullied or have behavioral problems that may be potential threats? I understand a lot of our students have been big threats. Do you, do our schools and sheriff department, work together with that, try to identify that. A lot of these students have to deal, mostly around the country, have to deal with students that have been bullied, that have mentally ill health. We're issues. actively sharing information. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.